Hello everyone, welcome back to Toy Box Tutorials. I've got Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with me, and today we're going to take a look at the scoreboard, and we're going to use it along with the stadium stands and the basketball hoop to build a little basketball free throw game. You can find the scoreboard in the Creativa Toys drawer, along with another toy, the team scoreboard. We're going to look at both of these today. So first let's take a look at the scoreboard. So we'll open the logic menu and you'll notice there's a couple of options here and some properties. So let's begin by looking at the properties. The first field is play two and you would set this if you wanted the players to play to a certain score and the game would end when the score was reached. And so by default this is three but you can select this and you can set this as high as that. If you try to go higher, it won't let you do that. If you want the player, one of the players to win by two points, you can turn that on. By default, it's off. Visible display, of course, turns the scoreboard on so you can see it or it leaves it off. And uh, if you want it on all the time, you can leave that on. And uh, if you want it off, you can turn it off. And we'll go ahead and turn, we'll go ahead and leave it on for now. Hide unused score fields. So this by default is on. So if you only have one player, the scoreboard will not show the scores for player two. Um, if you want to see both players' scores regardless, you can turn that off. But we'll go ahead and leave it on. So those are the four properties that the scoreboard has. All right. And let's go ahead and just throw a little button out here really quick, just so we can take a look at the behaviors for this. Oops. We're not going to use this button. It's just temporary, but put that down. So if we do a new logic connection on the button, when pressed, and we come over to the scoreboard, you'll notice the logic menu is available. So there are behaviors. And there's a number of them. <coughs> Excuse me. You can reset the scoreboard. So you would do this in between games, for example, if you wanted to reuse it. Removing it from the display will actually take it away from the display and hide it so you can't see it. Activate turns the scoreboard on. And by default, this is deactivated. So you want to make sure you activate it when you use it and you probably want to deactivate it when you're done. Deactivating it also removes it from the display. And then you can increment or decrement the score depending on what happens in your game. And if you increment, you can increment by a certain amount, certain number of points. As you can see, there's a lot of options. So if we wanted to increment, for example, by five, and then it'll ask you which player's score. So you can say player one. <clears throat> so pushing the button will in increment the score by five for player one. And uh, let me go ahead and delete that link. All right, and on the scoreboard, if you look at the new logic connection, there's a number of trigger signals here. And there's a whole bunch of them. So target score reached, this will trigger when one of the players hits the play two number. When player one's score is changed or player two, um, these trigger signals will fire. And uh, <clears throat> so if you want some toy to go off whenever their score changes, you can hook up to that and it'll do it. Of course, three and four, we don't have players three and four anymore because we don't have online play, but if you did, that's what these would do as well. There's a reset option, so whenever the scoreboard is reset, it can notify other toys of that if you want. When one of the players wins, when they reach that target score and they win by two or not, if, depending on if you have that flag on, these trigger signals will fire. And then of course, when the the scoreboard is activated or deactivated. So that is the scoreboard. Now the team scoreboard is basically identical 
there's just a little bit of naming difference. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting over my uh, cold. But if you look at the properties, they're the exact same four properties. And if you look at the logic connections, they're really the exact same logic connections, but instead of player one's score changed, it's the blue team's score, or orange team's score, or green or purple. And whether which team wins. So it's basically the exact same trigger signals, just depends, uh, just a naming difference, depending on whether you're dealing with teams or not. So for, if you are doing a game with teams, the team scoreboard probably makes more sense. And then of course you have the same logic connections, the same behaviors as you do with the others, except under increment and decrement, if you increment by one, it's not player one, player two, it's the team. All right, so we're not gonna use the team scoreboard for this game and we're not gonna need this button. So let's take the scoreboard along with the other toys that we've looked at over the last few weeks and put it all together to build a little basketball game. This is gonna be a single player game to keep it simple. If you have two players, they can work together to try to get the highest score. But for this game, we're gonna need a few things. So I'm gonna put down, first of all, a locator here on top of the starting pad. And I wanna make sure the little blue dot is facing that way, and it is. And we're gonna place another one out here, just beyond the seam for these uh, terrain blocks here, or these building blocks. So this one is gonna sit right here. Just pull up my screen grab here to make sure I put that in the right place. So two locators. And then we're also going to need a challenge maker. And we'll drop this right here in front of the player where they start. We looked at the challenge maker back in episode 37. We're gonna need the falling object generator. And I'm gonna put this uh, about right here we looked at this, of course, back in episode 60. So I'm gonna place this up here in the air, about like that. We're gonna put down three of these, and you'll see why in a moment. Continuing to the right. We're going to need a timer. We looked at this back in episode 37 as well. I'll put this right out here on side of the scoreboard. Of course, we already have our scoreboard. I'm going to use a logic gate. We'll put this here in front of the timer. And a randomizer. We'll put this out here like that. And I believe that is everything we're going to need. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we already have a repeater and a randomizer from an earlier episode. This was to get the crowds to just kind of have some random background cheering. And so we're going to continue to use that. And we still have this hoop hooked up to the stadium stands to, s to cheer when the player scores. So we're going to leave that hooked up as well. All right, so that's what we need. So let's start with the challenge maker. And we're gonna connect up to our locators. So we're gonna connect first to this one. This will be the start location for all players. And then we'll hook up to the other locator. And when the game is done, that's what this is gonna be. So that'll be our end location. And on the properties for the challenge maker, points high to low, starting location is going to be separate locations. The end location though is going to be the locator. So that's the one on the starting pad. Use end location on abort. So if the player decides to abort the game, that will also take them out of the arena and put them on the start pad. And the rest of these are all fine. 
All right, new logic connection. And let's go ahead and start with the scoreboard. So on invites accepted, we're going to come to our scoreboard and uh, we're going to reset. So that will make sure the scoreboard is set for a new game. And then on the challenge maker, a new logic connection when the game is started. We will activate the scoreboard and turn it on. And a new logic connection on the challenge maker. When the game is ended, we'll go ahead and deactivate the scoreboard. And one more thing, on the challenge maker we're going to do a new score results connection. And we'll connect that up to our scoreboard as well. And what that will do is pull the results off the scoreboard at the end of the game and display the use display that to the players, display it to the users so that they can see what the final result was. All right. Next, let's set up the timer. This is what's going to govern the game. And for the target time on this, I'm going to set this to 120. And that will be basically two minutes. So the idea of the game is how many baskets can you make in two minutes? We'll go ahead and leave the visible display on. And we are, uh, yeah, we can count down from the target time. Properties, yeah. All right. On the challenge maker, new logic connection on invites accepted. There's two things I actually need to do with the timer. That's why we have the logic gate out here. But the first thing we're going to do is reset. That'll reinitialize the timer. Second thing I want to do on the challenge maker on invites accepted, is I want to come back to the timer and do another thing, but I can't. So that's why we have the logic gate. We're just going to use this as a pass through. So I'm going to connect to that and input. And on the logic gate, new logic connection on output. Now that I can connect to the timer. And what we're going to have that do is show the timer display. So that will display it. And actually on the timer, let me go under the properties and turn this off. So it's not visible all the time, just when we play the game. All right, on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is started, we're going to start the timer. And new logic connection on the challenge maker. When the game is ended, we'll go to the timer and we are going to hide it. And on the timer, a new logic connection when the timer is expired, we'll come back to the challenge maker and complete the game. So once the timer hits zero, we're done. That ends the game. All right, that takes care of the timer and the scoreboard. Now we need to do the game itself. And what we're going to do is we have three falling object generators up here, and I'm gonna pick one randomly. So the ball isn't always going to be in the same starting spot. If it was, you could just stand here and push them into the <laughs> into the launcher, and that would be way too easy. So not knowing where the ball is going to fall, you're going to have to move around a little bit, and that'll make the game a little bit more challenging. And to randomly pick one of those, that's why we have this randomizer. And so on our challenge maker, <clears throat> we're going to do a new logic connection. When the game is started, let me make sure that's right. Yes. When the game started, we're going to come to the randomizer. We're going to do an action. And on the randomizer, a new logic connection. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Boy, I'm really having trouble this today. Uh, random trigger one will come up to the first falling object generator. And we're going to generate a basketball. 
And on the randomizer, new logic connection on random trigger two. Do the same thing for the middle one. And on the randomizer, a new logic connection on random trigger three. We'll come to the third one and drop a basketball. So when the game is started, it'll invoke the randomizer that will randomly select one of the falling object generators and drop a ball. So that gets us our first ball. Now once the ball goes into the hoop, we're going to have the stadium stands cheer, and that's already hooked up. There's a couple more things we want to do. So on the properties for this, we've already got this set up to defeat, so that's going to remove the ball. So we're going to have to put a new one out here, and we also want to change the score. So on the hoop, we're going to do a new logic connection when a basket is scored by a physics ball. First thing we will do is go to the scoreboard, and we are going to increment baskets are two, right? By two, the score for player one. And then on the hoop, new logic connection when a basket is scored by a physics ball. We will come over here to the randomizer and drop a new ball. So on the randomizer, we'll have that do an action. And that'll pick the, one, the same one or a different one and drop another ball for us. And then we have the repeater over here for the stadium stands that we'd hooked up a couple episodes ago. So be nice to have some background cheering, so let's hook that up. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection on invites accepted. We'll go over to our repeater and turn that on. And on the challenge maker, a new logic connection when the game is ended. Go over to the repeater and turn it off. That'll give us some cheering in the background while we play the game. And I believe that is everything. Just double checking all of my notes. Yeah. So let's go ahead and give it a try and see how it plays. So we step on the challenge maker, start the challenge. Mickey's in the arena. And here we go. All right, where do we get our ball? It's going to be over here. All right, so try to line up between here and the... There we go. <laughs> okay, there's a basket. Let's see if we can do another one. All right. Now we got a ball over here, so you can see how having the ball show up in different places each time makes this a little bit more challenging. Oh no! <laughs> Catch it, Mickey! There we go. Oh, that one didn't make it. There, that one did. You can hear the crowd reacting when you make the basket, so that's pretty good. Ah! <laughs> I never said I was good at this, by the way. <laughs> ah! This is what makes the game a little challenging. Mickey, get that ball moving in the right direction here, bud. Go, go, go. There we go. Boy, that wasted a lot of time. That's why it can take, be pretty good to take a, just a moment and line up your shot. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right. Ten seconds. Can I do one more? That's off. That's off. <laughs> nope, that's it. <laughs> 
So let's see how we did. It should pull the score results, and it did. So there we go. I got 10 points. I made five baskets. And when we're all done, it put us back out here on the start pad. Well, it's a fun little game, and it's not uh, too difficult to implement. And uh, it can be a little bit challenging. If you have a second player, though, that can help a little bit. <laughs> or the second player might possibly hinder you, but you can kind of cover two different sides of that little arena. Maybe make baskets a little bit quicker, but that's it for the scoreboard. It's pretty easy to use, and it allows you to keep score in any kind of game you want to build in the toy box. Next week, I've got one more toy that we're going to look at, and then we'll be finished with the sports toys, and we'll move on to some of the more advanced toys. Before you go, please leave a comment and let me know what you think of my little basketball game. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow me on my blog if you haven't already done that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.